hit it. Hello and welcome to Florence. Or should we say, buongiorno, benvenuti a Firenze. Just a little bit of Italian to start this video with. Un po' italiano? <laughs> I don't know the rest. Florence isn't just one of our favorite places in Italy. It's one of our favorite cities in the world. The city is filled with art, history, and most importantly, food. In this video, we wanna help you plan your trip to Florence by showing you where to stay, what to do, and most importantly, where to eat. Andiamo. First off, let's talk about where to stay. Now, every time we've gone to Florence together, we've stayed in Airbnbs, and we love the freedom of it, and we love feeling like a local in the town. Now, one of our favorite things to do is to pick up a bottle of Brunello and have a glass of wine hey. before we hit the town. Here are a few tips when looking for an Airbnb in Florence. If you're looking to book an Airbnb, be sure to read the reviews and look for noise complaints because you might find yourself staying in an apartment that's a little too close to a piazza or the Duomo and those places can get really loud at night and you might find yourself not able to sleep. We also recommend checking out Airbnbs on the other side of the Arno River. Now those Airbnbs are gonna have a much more local vibe. If Airbnbs aren't your style or it's your honeymoon or you just wanna class it up, check out one of these hotels right here. These are some of the nice ones that we definitely recommend checking out. The St. Regis and the Westin are both located on the Arno River in the city. Now if you book a river view suite, you'll get to see the famous Ponte Vecchio Bridge with a beautiful Tuscan sunset every single night. Mwah. <laughs> now the Belmont and the Four Seasons are on the outskirts of the city. And that's more like staying in a grand Tuscan villa. There's one bad thing about Florence, and that is there's no Uber. Boo! But they do have a taxi service that you can use, and there's a number that you need to call, and we'll put the number downstairs, downstairs. <laughs> put that number below. Next, the most important part of your trip, where to eat. Let's go check that out. Mangiamo. Florence is foodie heaven. Now the toughest part of your trip is gonna be deciding where to eat because there's so many amazing restaurants. If you wanna see us exploring Florence and trying out all the amazing restaurants in Florence, check out our foodie guide video, which is either here or here. But for now, here is our list of our top recommendations. First up, La Grada Guelfa. Now you'll wanna get the peachy pasta, the lasagna, and a liter of house wine. Next up, the Brindaglione. Get the truffle pasta, zucchini flowers, again, a liter of house wine, and you gotta top it all off with a Florentine steak. Next up is Pizzeria Antica Porto. Now this is some of the best pizza in the world, so feel free to skip all of the appetizers and order a pizza just for yourself. <laughs> Don't be surprised if you eat two pizzas, because this super thin pizza is some of the best we've ever had. And now for some fine dining, Gucci Osteria. <sighs> okay. So if you haven't had enough Massimo Vittorio, you know, one of the best chefs in the world, we're about to give you more. That's right. <laughs> we're at his newest restaurant, which is a Gucci Osteria, which is in downtown Firenze. And it is the newest culinary creation and from it's, Massimo. It's a partnership with Gucci. That's right. You got two artistic creators coming together. What could be better? If you want to try Massimo Vittorio's tortellini, but you can't get into Osteria Francescana, this is a place where you can try it and get in for paying way less than what it costs, $1,000, at his three Michelin star restaurants. Stop by here for a glass of wine and some famous tortellini. Next up is Austria Alantico Vinayo. We finally got it. Like we said, it's a bit intimidating, but look at this. We're gonna do it like everyone else does, sit on the street, maybe get a glass of wine, and enjoy this fresh Italian sandwich. This uber famous sandwich shop is worth a stop. And don't worry if there's a line, it always goes fast. We recommend the award-winning Favolosa. Plus, it's only five euro a sandwich. So if you're on a budget, this is a spot to stop. That's some good stuff. <laughs> and right after that, you gotta get some gelato. And the two places that we recommend are Pequeno and Grom. Some people might be upset because Grom is a franchise, but we love both of these. They're excellent gelato spots. For cocktails, be sure to check out the rooftop bar at the Westin, STO. This has some of the best views of the city and it's perfect for an aperitivo. By accident, we just found one of the coolest spots to see Florence. It's on top of the Westin 
It is a cocktail bar up here, but wow, look at this view. If this isn't your style, you can also try your hand at sabering champagne at the St. Regis. This happens around 7 p.m. each night. We did it, and Coco looks super fab in the safety glasses they make you wear when they give you the sword. What can I say? <laughs> For more on where to eat, check out our full foodie guide right here. Now, culture. Here are some travel tips that will save you a ton of time when planning your trip to Florence. For museums and galleries, buy your tickets ahead of time. Now you can do this online and it will save you a ton of time and you won't have to wait in those pesky lines. You can find the links for buying tickets in our blog post right here. One of the most important places to stop is the Duomo in Florence. This is a must visit. And now when you go, there are a few things you recommend. One, if you're adventurous enough, climb to the top, but try to do it as early as possible in the day because the stairways up are very narrow and it's only one way in and one way out. And when we did it, we went late in the day and if you're claustrophobic, do not go because you will be stuck in some tight cramped spots with sweaty people surrounding you. <laughs> the other tip with the Duomo is make sure to book your tickets ahead of time and we recommend to book a travel guide to show you all the history and all the nuances that this place offers. And that again can be found with the link right up there. Another favorite thing to do in Florence is to watch the sunset at Piazzale Michelangelo. I hope I said that right. Ma. <laughs> now this is on the other side of the Arno River and it's where all of the locals go to grab a glass of wine or drink a beer and watch the sunset over the romantic city of Florence. And if you're a photographer, bring your camera and bring your tripod because this is the spot to get some of the best photos of Florence. Ah, <laughs> Tartufo! <laughs> One of our favorite things that we did in Florence was we went truffle hunting with a puppy. You just learned right, that. What, what is this? That if we don't keep up with the dog when we're hunting, yeah. the dog will definitely eat <laughs> the truffle before we get there. So that is, that is rule number one, keep up with the dog. Look at this face, uh, you know, you understand, you know, she's a bandita. Eh? You're a bandita, <laughs> she's a bandita. She, she's a truffle bandita, Maga. Truffle bandita. Because Maga has been trained that she can eat <laughs> truffle only little. It was amazing. If you have the time to get outside the city, this is one of the most Italian Tuscan things that you can do. Check out Giulio the Truffle Hunter. It's one of the best. You will have a blast. If you love truffles, it's a must. And puppies. And puppies too. <laughs> and finally, our last recommendation is to not plan everything. One of the best things about Florence is just walking around and exploring the city. You'll be surprised at all the amazing restaurants, stores, and shops that will make your vacation memorable. Guys, thanks so much for watching. As always, I'm Scott. And I'm Colette. And we are the Italian couple. <laughs> and we are Romero. And if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe below. Grazie mille. Ciao. Ciao.